Hello, welcome to Mimi's Keepsakes. I'm Arnell. Thank you for joining me today. First of all, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you'll have a wonderful day today, whatever today holds in for you. Um, and then second of all, I'm very sorry I've been kind of missing in action since January. I have been trying desperately to get a grip on my a mess and my craft room and just organizing and reorganizing trying to figure out a way where things would just be a little bit more practical and work for me on a daily basis because at the moment it's not working at all anyway it feels like that's all I'm doing organizing and reorganizing every day and hopefully at some point I'll get to a point where I feel like I know exactly where everything is <laughs> in my craft room. Anyway, let's move on. What am I here to share with you today? I am here to share with you a new slow stitch project. It is, uh, the channel is called K3N Cloth Tales and Catherine has a weekly slow stitch prompt 2024. All you need to do is make a, well, first of all, you need to make a book or a quilt or something to do with these little squares. My book is not done yet, not even started yet, but I will get to that. In the meantime, my little squares are living in a plastic Ziploc bag. So the first, so these are the little squares and I think I shared the first maybe two prompts with you already on the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery video. Uh, the first prompt was community and she did fabric weaving and I have never done this before and I can tell you I am in love. I just love the texture. I love how fast it went. I just love it. It's just absolutely beautiful and these are all just random scraps and I will definitely make more of these. I made three of them. The second last prompt for Roxy Creations Volume 4 was fabric weaving and I was kind of stumped, didn't want to do it, so that's where I stopped. So that's why my scroll is not done yet, but I have two options here that I will add to my scroll. So that was week one. Week two was dark and light and I have this circle and on this side is a dark fabric and this one lighter and I um, couch some uh, yarn on there and I uh, this idea I got from my friend Dagmar, Circle of Light. Uh, so I think she did that with hers too and I just love that uh, and the fabric here on the bottom. And this was the first one I actually did. I couldn't get myself to cut up this beautiful fabric so I had the rose just peeking out and I might still go in and embroider inside. This one will go in my book and this one I'll use for another project, maybe the front of a journal cover or something like that. And that's what makes these squares so amazing. You can use it for anything. If I back some cardstock on here, I have a pocket for my... Um, journal or maybe even with cardstock on you'd be able to write on cardstock here it won't be too bumpy and it could be a journaling card so i don't think these squares are totally useless and i will definitely copy some of these as i have time which at the moment i do not because i am trying to organize <laughs> anyway so week four was diversity and she did uh, all the fabric or textile crafts that that inspired her or that her grandmother and mother did so I this kind of stumped me and that's where I got behind and I decided in the end you know what stop overthinking just copying what she did it was beautiful and just go from there it's something new so I made a little quilt I'm not a quilter so this was fun to do and made me think quilting might not be as complicated as I think it is and just little things this was mending so I cut a hole in there and I mended that circle there with the weaving of threads all kind of fun and then um, week four was choices so for this one you needed fabric strips in a bag and you just pull out a strip and put it on your square and I love this too it's um, 
because you didn't choose anything like here I kind of have two white fabrics together next to each other which I wouldn't have chosen but I still like the effect that one is repeated which I wouldn't have done either if I chose something but I do like the end effect and again it, wouldn't this be just the cutest little pocket in a journal if I just so I need to sit and make more and then week six was hidden histories untold stories and she did English paper piecing now this is another one that kind of got me to fall behind after I caught up <laughs> uh, as soon as there's something new and I'm not sure I just I need to just process and wait until I can do it. So this one has um, hexagons and I'm thinking compared to the other squares I might have to put a backing behind it to make it bigger on my page once I have a book or I should add just another row of hexagons on here. I might do that but I love this another new obsession. <laughs> don't know where all of this will take me but I do like the hexagons and it was so relaxing to make them and then um, week six was tricky cloths Trixie cloths she called them and those are cloths that you struggle to use because they're difficult to sew and the needle to go through and stuff like that so I have some thicker wool here I have some sari here I have organza here velvet and then this is from a sari silk it has a lot of beading on there which is sometimes once you've cut it you need to secure all the little beads so you, you kind of avoid doing that but I love how this looks there's lots of texture in there and interest and then I also decided to add these trims on there because these trims are takes a little longer to sew on which I sometimes avoid and then this one especially as well because it frays easily and you have to secure the edges so I thought that's another trick see it's not a cloth per se but it will add dimension to my um, project so anyway today she is doing love or and she made this beautiful textured heart so I was thinking I'll do the same so before I need to do a heart I need probably need a good square to cut out a heart so I'll just let's just tear this I do not have my fabric scissors here and these scissors are covered in glue so they're not perfect but they will do the job for now I just need little pieces and then I am going uh, she did a paper heart but I'm not even gonna do that I'm gonna be really lazy and just maybe draw my heart on my piece of fabric Let's see how that heart looks once I cut it out. And again, my fabric scissors. Let's see what's here. This one might be better than that one. It might not have as much glue on it. Okay. I just need to quickly see how big this is compared to my squares because I do need to keep in mind that I need to put this in a book. Just make it a little less fat here. Okay. And then I have all these red and pink um, just little scrap pieces here that we're going to piece together I also have some silk ties here I know that's a Trixie cloth but I thought it would be nice to have some uh, shinies in here as well for Valentine's Day so let's just start by adding 
some fabrics on here and then I'm just going to uh, probably just running stitch again on top not gonna like I say I don't want to overthink these I want it just to be relaxing fun easy to do um, let's get a redder a really red red in here as well it feels like everything is very I don't know this is kind of a piece of satin another Trixie cloth but it should be okay there's a piece of wool so nice red let's get some pink in here and this is some avocado dyed cotton and if it overlaps I can just cut it into a heart shape once I'm done another oh do I want something um, don't know if I want too much white maybe in there not sure let's get a darker red in here and then maybe this one the wool on top we just want to layer I can't remember exactly what she did <laughs> but I'm going to try to do a little bit of my own thing maybe there's another piece or do I want a different pink Know if I like the green on there. Let's do the tie. But then I have two shiny pieces together. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, let's get the tie. not even going to try to tear these the ties that won't work mm. dark red let's get a brighter red and this one has white in it but I think it should be okay some pink again I think I need to start pinning because I'm going to run into trouble here I have been busy, like I said, organizing, um, just sorting through things that I've just accumulated. We've been in this rental house and, you know, over time you just accumulate and then um, because the storage isn't perfect things just kind of get tossed sometimes which don't ever do that but yeah so I just decided to I don't know where I my scissors are I don't know where if I have 
pink thread or whatever, you know, just because everything is just unorganized. So it takes me an hour to find something and I know I have it. And whenever that happens, I just feel, okay, it's time to start organizing again. So I just need a home for everything, a little spot where everything can live. And that is what I'm trying to accomplish with this. <laughs> and I'm doing, uh, I am recording videos while I'm doing it. So I will share with you my process and maybe you can find some inspiration or learn from my mistakes. I'm going about this like before because it's a rental house. I kind of felt like I don't want to paint this tray or whatever, but I, but I would have done it if I was in my own house. So I just decided, you know what, make your peace. You're going to be here a lot longer than you thought. So just um, get organized, um, except that you're here <laughs> you need to settle into the space and just yeah just yeah like, like i say make it a home and not just a temporary spot so i have been um trying to do that just get that in here uh, yeah so I am painting things that I thought I'm not even going to bother with but I now I am doing that and I'm very happy that I am doing that because it just makes everything so much easier to access and to see and to it looks like I don't have enough little pieces of red or pink Anyway, long story short, that's what I'm doing. I need some of those teeny tiny little pens for projects like this. Maybe I should think about getting some of those tiny pens. put more of those ties on here. I do like the way they look. There's, oh, there's the same red. Maybe I'll put this on the bottom as well. Got it too small. Need a bigger piece. going on with my phone. Maybe I'll use some of this kind of crinkly red. This is a sorry silk. Let's do that one. Actually lots of silk that's coming out here. So I am going to cut this down back into a heart shape before I start sh sewing it. This one's blunt. Okay. Do a little another check there. Maybe I will throw in this piece just for more interest and of course once you start sewing over this it's going to look totally different this one's too big mm. 
And I, I'm trying not to overthink this, not to think about too much about where I put anything. Maybe I need a little, a little. Just have to make sure everything overlaps enough. Let's put that one there because it's big enough. And then we can put that strip over. I finished adding the fabric so now I'm just going to cut it down and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start sewing like doing little running stitches over this and hope that I can catch each little piece of fabric because I did add a lot of little pieces I don't know if I'll regret that We'll have to see. And I mean, the heart does not have to be perfect. This is slow stitching. Nothing has to be perfect. Okay. just want to make sure that this bottom piece at least and I can always shape it a little bit more if I just want a nice definite point there let's get rid of all the fabrics here and then I have chosen pink thread um, it's a DMC which one is this DMC uh, 668 and all I'm going to do uh, Kate didn't stitch hers like just left to right I might have to do the same just because it's now let's start with this this way and see how it goes but not Kate Catherine and this fabric that I'm sewing onto at the moment is a stretchy fabric and I'm thinking should I add um, I have this teeny tiny piece of red here, <laughs> like really tiny. Should I just add that on there and cut it afterwards? Maybe just look on the back where because I had a little bit of white peeking through there and then I'm gonna go just here at the top end of the heart didn't catch totally and maybe I'll go around the heart when I'm done not sure we'll see want to catch that top little layer <laughs> oh that does not look good it's looking from the other side but it's okay we'll just keep going Just trying to catch all the small pieces of fabric. That one 
is a little too big, but like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's not concentrate on that. And of course, all the pins does not help. Definitely need some of those teeny tiny little pins. They are short, shorter than these. I have to look into that. It's a nice warm day for us today. Definitely starts feeling like spring, which means we'll be, we'll start working in the garden soon, which will be definitely different for us this year because I'll have to drive to my house and take care of the garden and prune you know do stuff like prune the roses and clean the beds and we have an irrigation system so luckily that will be but I don't think I will add any flowering pots that I usually do because that needs way more attention I'll have to be there way more regularly and it where we live now is about, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes drive, depending on the on the traffic. This is very messy. Anyway. I will continue, maybe I'll just do a couple more. Anyway, so spring will bring new challenges for us for sure, because the lawn will need mowing, and which we didn't have to do. We, oh, we still had to go do some s snow shoveling and sh snow removal at our house. You can't just leave everything and in the fall we had to do um, the leaves clean all of that up so it's not like we don't have any work at our own house just because we're not living there things still needs to be kept maintained maintained that should be interesting It might have been easier if I just went in quickly and sewed these pieces of fabrics down. But I was lazy and now I definitely regret it. But one part of the heart is almost done, so we'll just keep going. should make little smaller stitches as well that will help to get all the little pieces of fabric together maybe I should have picked bigger pieces of fabrics <laughs> But I wanted to use my little scraps because I did put all my little scraps. If you watch um, the 
a studio tour that Catherine did on her channel. She had a bin, and she sorts her scraps by size. I or her fabrics. I sort my fabrics by color and some of them by designer if I like a certain line I will keep them together and not sort them by color let me know what you do for your scraps or your fabrics I'm in the process of reorganizing my fabrics as well because I just bought a bunch of new not new, we just acquired a bunch of new Tom Holtz fabrics and I was just, you know, I have so many other fabrics that I haven't added to my closet and then we got my, I got my um, sorry silks back from the restoration company so I wanted to organize that and add that to my existing fabrics because I did get some of my fabrics back from the restoration company as well. So it's just mixing everything back in together and just get a good a variety of colors again. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. So it's not like I'm starting from scratch with my fabric. But yeah, let me know in the comments how you organize your fabrics. Do you do it by color, by size, like Catherine does? So anyway, I decided once I saw hers, I thought, okay, I need a bin with all the little pieces of fab scraps, and they can be just mixed in together. It doesn't have to be by color. I do have the bowl on my desk that I've shown you and if you watch a lot of my videos. Um, but I just felt like my scraps were accumulating and I needed to get them back together again. So now I do have a bin with small scraps, medium scraps. See, I should have. It would have been so much easier if I just took that extra five minutes and sewed all of these onto my backing. Anyway, it's done. Um, anyway, medium scraps, and I need something there to cover that piece of white, but maybe something bigger. Uh, small, medium, and large scraps and then I also did just a bin, a plastic bin with um, just strips in because I do end up with a lot of strips and I am happy with how that like for this I just went to my smallest scrap bin and grabbed some scrap burns and then while I was seeing that I thought oh I have the ties I can add the ties to this as well um, anyway, that's how I started organizing that. So, but I will continue to maybe do the stitching. I don't know if you want to watch me. <laughs> stitch it's valentine's day i'm sure you can do better things than watch me stitch today and i just lost my thread here I need to re-thread and this is pretty frustrating to look at i should have sewn these down just do like a quick couple of stitches it wouldn't have taken that long um so now you think you save time but you're actually complicating your life and it takes longer because it keeps catching on the pins. Anyway, so I will finish the stitching. Maybe go have lunch, which I don't normally do, but for some reason today I'm very hungry. And then I will come back once all the stitching is done 
and show you the end result. Well, here's my finished heart. I have done all the stitching. I've cut the edges nice and the right shape again. And um, I really like how it looks. So I was thinking maybe I'll add a, um, what do you call, yo-yo in the middle. Maybe that, or I have this crocheted heart that I got from Dagmar, I think she crocheted Dagmar, I'm not sure. Um, the other thing that I have is this little bow that the kids, they got those lint teddy bears in their stockings at Christmas and I kept these little bows mainly for that charm, but I wonder Maybe I'll sew that on there. I will sew that on there afterwards. I left my needle upstairs. But anyway, that's how my heart will look in the end. My Valentine's heart with that maybe sewn on there. I do like just a little bit of detail and texture there. And it will sit on top of a page in a book. Let's take the gray away so the red kind of pops. Anyway, that is the uh, Slow Stitch Prompts 2024 uh, hosted by Catherine from K39 um, K3N Cloth Tales. I will link her channel in my description box and if you want to follow along, do follow along. These are not, they do not take very long. They're just really nice quick um, little projects that you can do. There'll be 52 of them. So I have to figure out a book that would be have a big enough spine to host to hold my 52 projects for the year and um, I will do that as soon as I'm done um, reorganizing my room. So again it's K39 Cloth Tales. Everything will be in the description box and I hope you have a lovely rest of your Valentine's Day and um, I will see you again soon. Bye!